Welcome to HurtTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to show you a little tour of a few interesting things uh, in my winter landscape. I started this landscape project last year. If you haven't followed along with the channel, please do. Uh, I've got lots and lots of plans uh, for this yard in uh, 2021. Uh, most of the plants uh, were just planted uh, recently, so that there's not a lot of height on a lot of this stuff, but um, a lot of it is looking pretty good. So let's get started uh, walking around looking at a few things. The plants I'm showing you in this video, I have uh, individual videos for on my channel. And I got to start with this Florida Sunshine Elysium right here. Uh, this thing is super, super showy. As you can see right now, it's up against, I put it up against this uh, blue shed. Uh, here we are in the uh, middle of January and it's just incredibly striking. Uh, it's like this uh, year round. Uh, the uh, new growth in the spring is even brighter than this. Uh, but in the, uh, in the winter, you just can't, you can't get a pop of color uh, in a winter garden uh, like this uh, typically uh, without flowers. Uh, behind it, um, I've got a, uh, uh, early wonder camellia, which has been blooming uh, up until recently. It's still got a few more flower buds on it, but it's got that big double pink flower. I think these are going to look great together uh, as they grow and mature on the side of this uh, building. So that Elysium was way in the back of the yard. I want to come out here to the front yard and show you a couple things uh, real quick. Uh, this is an Empress of China dogwood. This is actually an evergreen dogwood. Thought I'd show it for once uh, in January and show you that it is indeed uh, an evergreen dogwood. Uh, this one is just a fantastic uh, specimen. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, budded up and uh, ready to bloom uh, in the spring. Leaves are super attractive on it. I'm actually putting a little white picket fence uh, across here that's going to differentiate uh, the area along the street where the camera is sitting uh, from it pretty soon and it's going to just look great on the back of that little picket fence. I have a few containers I'll show you uh, real quick. Uh, this was a uh, topiary that I did uh, in a uh, video. Uh, if you haven't seen this video um, I just I got this uh, Lowe's clearance holly and uh, turned it into a small topiary area and uh, put these uh, flowering kale and these white pansies uh, into this rectangular container. This is like a steeds holly right here that you can find pretty readily that can be kept in this kind of Christmas tree shape. Again, it's got white pansies in there. Pansies look a little wimpy right this minute because I'm shooting this video. It's actually about 28 degrees. So the soil's slightly frozen uh, in the container, but uh, the sun's coming up on them now and uh, they'll look great in an hour or so. Let me show you a couple more containers. The sun is up and working pretty hard. These chartreuse colors might be a little washed out. I don't know. Uh, this container has a hookerella right here, which has kind of a almost pinky, uh, pinkish hue to it. Um, it's got this Everillo Carex. Uh, there's a uh, um, one pansy planted in here. I'm not doing much right this minute. And then uh, there's this gold mop cypress that I also turned into a, a topiary. Again, it was another clearance plant. I just bought one with a single trunk if you want to go back and uh, watch that, uh, that video. But I kind of like this gold on gold on gold container. So I've got lots of other uh, containers out here in the uh, front yard as well, but I'm really enjoying this simple Lamandra, this variegated grass in a container all by itself. Um, it stretched a little bit during last season because there was something else in the back of the pot, um, but now it's alone in there and it's going on one, kind of one direction, but uh, it's still beautiful. It stands out from a, a mile away, um, but that is a, a, a Lamandra. Last container, and then I'll get back to showing a few shrubs before I uh, wrap this up. Uh, this container right here has a, a Utopia Plum U uh, in the middle of it. Um, if you're in colder areas, you could use an actual uh, U. Uh, if you're uh, in the uh, south like I am, you can use a Plum U uh, like this. This is, a, uh, uh, this is just a purple kale that I did from seed. Uh, there's actually broccoli. Uh, right here. There's a few pansies in here. It's just a colorful uh, container. I used the purple pansies uh, with the purple kale and, uh, and then the uh, Utopia Plum U. Uh, that's a, uh, a Dragon Prince Cryptomeria in the little pot uh, right next to it. Uh, there's another one of those planted over there by the, uh, the building uh, as well. Great little low growing uh, uh, evergreen conifer. So I'm standing in the middle of two uh, Osmanthus fragrance. I've got two here and one on the other side of this uh, purple uh, foliage lower petalum right here. If you can see it, these things are in bloom right now in January. They bloom in the fall and uh, early spring typically, uh, but if it doesn't get very cold in the winter, and it hasn't really, we've had nights in the upper 20s, but nothing really uh, that would have shut it down. Uh, they just continue to uh, continue to flower. Super, super fragrant, beautiful uh, evergreen foliage. And I, these are on the property border here, and you can see how good of a job they're going to do uh, screening this space out uh, over over the years. They this one probably put on kind of slow to get started, uh, really. And then uh, this one probably grew as much as two feet uh, last season. I expect even more out of it uh, the third year that it's uh, in the ground. 
So I moved over one plant. This is that Osmanthus fragrance that I was standing next to. I can still smell it. It's behind me here uh, to this mood ring podocarpus. I really love this plant. Uh, this is a great plant for screening in a narrow space. I, I'm on a small urban two tenths of an acre lot. Don't have a lot of space. I'd like to create a border here, um, you know, between very small lots. And uh, this is just a great choice for that. This mood ring podocarpus can be you know, I could probably keep it. Come, I can let this thing get 15 feet tall, or I can probably keep it six or eight feet tall. I can box it off, or I can let it just kind of grow free form like it's growing right now. Kind of up to you how you would let it grow. I'll probably do a little bit of cutting on, on these kind of wild uh, ends just to make sure that I'm getting um, some material, you know, coming from the bottom of the plant uh, to kind of keep it full in the middle as it gets larger. So the last piece I'm going to show you in this video is this Marvel Mahonia, which here we are uh, right around the uh, middle of January, uh, is coming into a full flower. Flowers are just starting to open on it. Uh, pollinators actually love these uh, in the wintertime. Uh, on warmer days when they can get up and, and get moving, uh, you'll see bees uh, on, the, uh, on this uh, Mahonia in the wintertime. I didn't expect to get this many flowers on this Marvel Mahonia. I mean, I've seen photos with flower clusters this big on the top of these. Uh, but uh, the first season, yeah, I usually have low expectations on flowers on newly planted plants just because, you know, there's stress in moving something from a container to the ground. And, uh, but uh, this one is just putting on quite a show uh, for the very first year uh, that was in the ground. Beautiful foliage, beautiful flowers, uh, really loving this plant. Uh, again, I have videos for pretty much all the plants that I just showed you in this video. I may make another one because there's a lot of other uh, super interesting things uh, in the uh, winter landscape here uh, on my landscape project that I hope you're following along with. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, thanks for watching.